watching Fox Sports, broadcasting in HD and presented by DirecTV. Fox Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Bucs have won three in a row, but they'll be without their starting quarterback today. It's the NFL on Fox with the New Orleans Saints hosting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the NFL on Fox. I'm Sam Rosen along with Tim Ryan. For the New Orleans Saints, they've won five of their last seven. This is an important game as they start the final month of the season. They can move up in the wild card standings. They can move closer to first place. They've got to have this game against Tampa Bay. Well, today. You're absolutely right, Sam. And, and Sean Payton and the New Orleans Saints, as you said, have won five of seven. So clearly, they've got the chance now for the December playoff run. If they're going to get the W today, they will rely heavily on their wide open passing attack and their quarterback, Drew Brees who really has played well of late. It's real simple. If Drew doesn't play well, they don't win games. So he'll need to be on point today, in particular, to his wide receiver, Marcus Colston. If you look at him over the last five weeks, he has been the most productive wide receiver in pro football. More plays in the slot for him, which have been a bonus. Now, Sam, you mentioned it. For the Tampa Bay Bucks, they will be without the salty magician. The quarterback, <laughs> Jeff Garcia, is on the shelf today as the third quarterback with a low back bruise. So Luke McCown will get the start. It's his first start as a Buck but he's been in the system for three years so he knows the offensive scheme and as John Gruden told us they will rely heavily on this offensive line today to protect the passer to get the running game cranked up it should be interesting Luke McCown making his first start in three years put in a tough spot earlier today a lot of finals coming in Minnesota goes to six and six Seattle solidifies their hold on first place in the NFC West St. Louis beats Atlanta or they're beating Atlanta that's about to end Washington a tough loss a field goal with four seconds left for Buffalo won it in a very emotional day in Washington and Indianapolis with their 10th win of the season. The Bucks have won the toss they will receive. These two teams met in week two in Tampa and the Buccaneers won 31 to 14 dominating the game. Olinda Mare kicks it off. And on the return Michael Clayton. Gets a block from Stovall, drives forward across the 25 to the 26-yard line. And Luke McCown comes out for his first start since 2004 when he started four games with the Cleveland Browns. That's right. He started as a fourth-round draft choice for the Cleveland Browns, and career rating was not real good in Cleveland. Now, John Gruden told us yesterday, he said, hey, he knows the system. He understands that he's good in practice, but... You really don't realize it what he can do until game day. So I'm sure Jeff Garcia will be a big asset and a big help to Luke McCown today. Garcia is the third quarterback today. Bruce Gretkowski is the backup. Ernest Graham and B.J. Askew in the backfield. And it's Graham bouncing it out. Roman Harper, the safety, comes up to make the stop. Gain of two on the play. Roman Harper, who had his first career interception last week against Carolina good defensive game last week for New Orleans against a weakened Carolina team but they had four turnovers in the game well and that was their best game of the season I think collectively not even 200 total yards for the Carolina Panthers in that game so as Scott Fujita told us they felt terrific about that performance coming into today now Michael Clayton in as a third wide receiver McCown hits Ike Hilliard for a first down up at the 38 yard line short pass but to the reliable leading receiver on the team Ike Hilliard Josh Bullock's made the tackle and would not be surprised to see a lot of this from Luke McCown early the underneath passing game let the young quarterback get into a rhythm limit the turnover opportunities and get a little confidence under his belt Luke McCown played briefly in the opening game 
when Jeff Garcia went out for a while when he took a hard hit. Quick out to Galloway, slipped one man, and a nice play by Joey Galloway turns it into a first down at the Saints 47. We welcome those of you who are watching the St. Louis Rams beat the Atlanta Falcons 28 to 16. Sam Rosen and Tim Ryan here at the Superdome in New Orleans just underway opening series for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers first and 10 at the New Orleans 47. McCown off the play fake gets rid of it to the fullback P.J. Askew and Askew carries it down to the 31 yard line. Josh Bullocks with the tackle. No Jeff Garcia the heart and soul of the offense was hurt last week on the first play from scrimmage he took a hard hit above the hip to the ribs lower back he came back later in the game was ineffective and did not uh, do much practicing all week and the decision made today for him to stay out Ernest Graham no gain on the play that's a good tackle by Mike McKenzie the left cornerback. And they'll miss Jeff Garcia. This guy is he's been, been their the magic. leader. He's yeah, been their magic. Way. I mean, go back to the first New Orleans game week two where he really got it started. Remember, he wasn't great in the, in the week one matchup against Seattle. Week two against New Orleans. He was super in that football game. And should be interesting to see how the guys offensively, because they've rallied around Jeff all year, how they'll rally around really the unknown in a Tampa Bay Buck quarterback there, Luke McCown. Quick outside of Michael Bennett. He's got a good hole, and Bennett just off the bench carries it inside the 20 to the 18. Good play calling by John Gruden mixing it up, and McCown has started the game four for four with safe passes. Well, just as we thought, we get let him get his rhythm, let him get some stuff underneath. Nice to see Michael Bennett flashing and having an impact here. Hasn't done a lot since he got traded over here from Kansas City, but you got to like the way John Gruden right now is handling his quarterback, building some confidence early. Graham and Askew in the backfield. Galloway and Hilliard go to the right side. Galloway had a big game in week two against the Saints with two touchdown catches. It's Graham. There's a nice hole there. Graham gets inside the 15 to the 14. And we talked about that first meeting on week two. It was a real hot day, close to 100 degrees on the field. And Jeff Garcia, his leadership with his legs diving, going hard, aggressive, but it was his passing that was key. And he found Joey Galloway on that slant, turned into a 69-yard touchdown. And later on, he threw one for 24. Big game for Tampa Bay. From the 14-yard line on second down, McCown. Nobody open in trouble gets away from Charles Grant and runs out of bounds at about the 18 yard line Mark Simino the middle linebacker chased him out. Does that end up being a sack. That's going to end up being a sack. I isn't think it? you're right. And that's just that's just a young quarterback and a guy who is in his fourth year that knows better. You're out of the pocket. you got to just throw it away. You have the ability as a quarterback in this league when you break contain as long as you get the ball past the line of scrimmage get rid of it you'll nullify any chance to have a sack and the sack there will go to Mark Simino a four yard loss it's third and ten Maurice Stovall in as a third wide receiver Alex Smith the tight end splits out right McCown. And he connects with Stovall down to the 10 yard line but he's short of a first down. That'll bring up a fourth down and the field goal kicking unit comes out. A good drive by the Bucks from their own 26 yard line down to the 10 but it, now they will have to settle for a field goal provided oh. Matt Bryant makes it. Good stuff by the, the young quarterback with the exception of giving away that sack came out very very solid here early with that first drive. Matt Bryan 18 for 22 this season. This one from 28 yards. Josh Bidwell the holder. And it's through. So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers march from the 26 down to the 10. Put three points on the board. Kick it off. It's a good coverage team. 
good speed. Quincy Black is a key special teams cover man. Matt Bryant kicks it off. David Patton steps up to the eight yard line. Slips and is taken down at around the 17 18 yard line. Now the Saints go on offense, but the Bucks have the lead early. And there is Drew Brees. And you talk about it, Tim. You talk about when he's playing well, the team plays well. In their five wins, he threw 14 touchdowns, two interceptions. In the six losses, four touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Saints start for the 18. Reggie Bush motions. Everybody out. Screen pass to the tight end, Billy Miller. Spins and is taken down by Tremaine Phillips at the 24. Let's check out the Giants and the Bears. Here's Kurt Manafee. Well, Sam, the Giants' Eli Manning was picked off by Brian Urlacher on the opening possession. Rex Grossman turns it into points, finding Desmond Clark for the 7-0 lead early on in the first quarter. Back to Sam and Tim. Thank you, Kurt. Chicago starting the day five and six. Detroit lost. They're at six and six. Minnesota winning over Detroit at six and six. Seen a few five and six teams already lose this morning, which highlights the fact that if New Orleans wins this game, they'll be in good shape. All right. A pass by Breeze. He took a hit as he threw. He missed connection with Reggie Bush, and it'll bring up a third down, third and four. We're gonna get a little hit on Drew Breeze right here. And that's the whole thing. If they force him, and that will be a hurry right there that forced Drew Brees to throw it early, they probably won't get a lot of sacks, that being the Bucks. Drew Brees and that New Orleans Saints team have only been sacked eight times. But pressures and hurries today will be just as important to get Drew Brees out of an early rhythm. New Orleans has been good on third down conversions. They go empty backfield on third and four. Brees short but too high. Intended for Reggie Bush. It's three and out for the Saints. The Bucks defense was very effective against New Orleans in the game in Tampa in week two and they gave Drew Brees problems. Well they won the battle of the line of scrimmage in week two and that's what they'll have to do today and everybody that's watched Tampa over the years knows that Monty Kiffin's defenses they're always great in the back seven but the front four if they get it cranked up and they're playing well that's what makes that defense go that's what they've been able to do. Philip Buchanan deep to receive the punt of Steve Weatherford spinning kick Buchanan slipped. Is by him. Good roll for the Saints and is touched down at the 22 yard line. And the Bucks on a 54 yard punt. Drew Brees was upset with Reggie Bush in the pattern he ran on that last play. The dream. Who's the other team? Is it LSU? Is it Georgia? I think I'm still LSU. pushing for the Trojans. Think, you know that. Yeah, but they're going to the Rose Bowl, buddy. I, I think you're right. I think LSU is going to get in there. And that'll be exclusive on Fox, the BCS, the All State BCS selection show. McCown out of the shotgun. He is six for six. And look at Joey Galloway break away. Galloway still going. Gets a block from Hinyard. Waits for another block. And is down at the 37 yard line. What a play by Joey Galloway. That little slant pass that burned the Saints in week two burns them again here. Well, how about the throw by McCown? You're going to see Galloway. He's going to flash into your screen from over here, but watch the throw that splits the defenders. Powell right there in front of Jason David in between he and the linebacker Simino. 41 yards, Joey Galloway off to the races. Wow. And that's the guy who has exploded on them over the years in this matchup when you talk about Joey Galloway in big time production against the New Orleans Saints but you had to appreciate that throw by McCown didn't you that's Beautiful. the kind of play that Radkowski never made all week last week McCown has started the game six for six two tight ends in and they stopped the play there was a timeout apparently called John Gruden must have called it on the sideline timeout Tampa Bay so the Bucks want to talk things over the intense look on the face of John Gruden. Sam we saw in the first drive Drew Brees and Reggie Bush Drew kind of getting at him a little bit for running the wrong route. You see Sean Payton comes over to his quarterback trying to negotiate say everything's hey, all right now go talk to Reggie Bush and be a nice buffer between those guys and there's John Gruden coaching his young quarterback. Love the fact that we're in December and these head coaches are still working and coaching their tails off. They never stop.
from the Saints 37 on first down the play fake by McCown flushed out and he's got a nice game flag on the play behind he may get a hold on the Bucks. So what turned what started off as a good gain on the run by Luke McCown will be negated holding offense number 75 10 yard penalty repeat first down our referee Ron Winter is 13th years NFL referee university professor at Western Michigan. Tell you when you watch McCown and you saw there, he does have some mobility. Oh he, yeah, and, and his older brother Josh McCown, who is with the Raiders, has got the same type of stuff. Look at his start. That's a good start for for McCown, who's got better legs than people think in terms of his ability to run and escape danger. Ball back to the 47, second, first and 20. The short throw is complete. Mike Hilliard. It's back close to the original line of scrimmage. Picked up nine on the play. Now the 38-yard line. Bucks are moving the ball. McCown with seven completions now to five different receivers and one great throw to Joey Galloway so he's spreading it around a lot of stuff underneath the guys have been able to run after the catch but you saw I kill you they're just picking up the pieces on the interior that's what this offense does they get Joey on a couple of deep ones he'll stretch the defense and they start filtering everything underneath that's why I kill you right here is their number one receiver catches wise in motion Galloway McCown. Goes short on the check down to Ernest Graham. It's a two yard loss. Well covered by the Saints. Good play by Jason David, the cornerback coming up, along with Scott Fujita. Fujita, the leader on the defense for the Saints this year. Jason David, they're just sitting in his zone, so he's out at the flat. As soon as he sees this unloaded, you're going to see him fly up. Help get on the tackle there with Fujita. How good is Fujita? Oh, this game terrific. What a multifaceted player he is. Third and 12. Six defensive backs in for the Saints. Michael Clayton in as a third wide receiver for Tampa Bay. McCown swings it to Ernest Graham. Gets to the 35, and that's all. Good job by the Saints of swarming to the ball. Brian Young, who's back in the lineup after missing three games with a knee injury and that's a big man up front that really helps the Saints defense he's their most productive interior pass rusher when you look at Brian Young and he's active in the run game as well and as we always talk about we'll talk about the premier position that three technique on defense and that four three D that plays on the outside shade of the offensive guard that's the same position Brian Young plays and is very productive this will be officially a 52 yarder it's nearly 53. Economos is the long snapper. Bidwell the holder. Ryan comes up. No good. The season long 48. He missed from 52. The Saints take over. In terms of that division, that was in Indy, and Peyton Manning and the boys put that fire out. Saints come out with four wide receivers. They start from the 43, but run it with Reggie Bush, and he gets two yards up to the 45 yard line. First run of the game, and we've got after the play some wrestling for the football. The ball popped loose, and whistles are blowing, wrestling going on. And the officials trying to pry the players apart. And I believe they ruled the play down at the 45 where Reggie Bush went down. Drew Brees, by the way, with his completion of Billy Miller on the first series, has gone over 3,000 yards passing for the fourth consecutive year and fifth year in his fifth time in his career. Aaron Stecker and Mike Carney in the backfield. Stecker, the former Tampa Bay Buccaneer. Pushing hard gets about two yards on the play brings up third and six and you'll see more of Aaron Stecker as they try to get this running game going you know the first drive they came out and went empty every time and didn't run the football and I think talking to Sean Payton on Friday says we need more balance there's no question we've got to find a running game that goes north and south and over the last couple of weeks you've seen more touches from Aaron Stecker because of his ability to do that rather than Reggie Bush Sam who's been a lot of the horizontal run going sideways rather than getting it downhill third and six Stecker and Bush in the backfield and Breeze works out of the shotgun three man rush 
screens. Goes short to Stecker. He's got a first down in the Bucks territory. Down to the 44 yard line. Boy, Fain and Hovan have been going at it all game. That tackle on mm. Reggie a couple of plays ago was those two going at it. Here's the key there's no pass rush. Dialing up a, a, a three man rush, and Drew Brees got to his fourth progression there, was able to get the first down. What are your thoughts about what Tampa did? Monty Kiffin dropping eight and rushing three. Monty will mix it up, and he's doing more zone dogs than I think he ever did before. But you'll see several different zone looks from that defense all afternoon to try to keep Breeze off balance. Bush, play flicker, back to Breeze, going deep for Colston. And what a catch! Marcus Colston at the four yard line. He took it away from Philip Buchanan. And 40 that, yard gain on the play. And that's a guy just going up and making a play. Because I'll tell you, from watching up here, David Patton was wide open down the seam, but Drew Brees decides to go up to Colston. Buchanan going about 5'10, 5'11. Colston is every bit of 6'5. He went up and got that football. Timmy, you said it. Last five games, Marcus Colston has been the number one receiver in the NFL. 42 catches. I couldn't believe how big he was in talking to him on Friday. I mean, he's all a 6'5 and is thick too now, going 220 plus. Bush in the backfield. Lance Warren is a third wide receiver. The fade round and it's caught. Caught by Terrence Copper for a touchdown. And he beat Buchanan on that play. Drew Brees hits two big ones. The bomb to Colston on the flea flicker and the fade to Terrence Copper. Second touchdown of the season for Terrence Copper. For Drew Brees, his 19th touchdown pass. The extra point is good, and the Saints have taken a 7-3 lead. Five plays, 57 yards. And Drew Brees just drops this fade right on the money. I think Buchanan was expecting that backdoor fade to come to the back shoulder. Brees put it out in front of him in the perfect spot, and Copper comes up with his second touchdown of the year. Perfectly thrown by Drew Brees. Uh, that was an important series. Oh, they're happy on the bench. Look at the receivers. Look at David Patton talking to <laughs> Colston. They've got some emotion on the Saints bench. Team that started 0-4, won four in a row, then lost two in a row, then won last week at 5-6. and six. This is a crossroads game for their season. And as Breeze told us, he said this is the most important game of the year. It's absolutely critical that we win this, and I think he's right. I think he referenced the the remaining schedule for the Tampa Bay Bucks. They will be getting their starting quarterback back. This is really a must win for New Orleans if they want to reach the postseason. Melinda Barre to kick it off. Michael Clayton is back deep. Clayton backs up two yards deep and brings it out. Buries his head. And then he gets buried by the Saints coverage team at the 20 yard line led by Marvin Mitchell. You know with Drew Brees and all good quarterbacks it's just not the ability to throw the football and be accurate. He does a lot more things in terms of controlling the defensive line with his cadence getting guys to jump off sides controlling the linebackers with all of his play action fakes really good at that. And then the secondary what he does to the secondary and looking him off with his eyes he'll look left look left come back right does not give the secondary a jump on his receiver. Drew Brees, when he's doing all three of those things, he's on his game. And for the most part this year in their wins, it's been over the top in those three areas. Ernest Graham on first down, no game. Look at the Saints swarm to the ball. Wow. And diving on top was Jason David. You can see the emotion for the Saints. Which all the black jerseys get to the inside run here. Bullock's doing. You got to get in the action. <laughs> Pile was too big. Two tight ends, Alex Smith and Jeremy Stevens, on second and ten. 
McCown with time. Good throw to Galloway. First down up at the 33 yard line. Third catch of the game for Joey Galloway. 14 yard pickup. He's had three for 70 already. And that's the same route he ran earlier with success. That in route, and Luke McCown just found him. He had five defenders around him that time, and McCown threaded in between him to get it to Galloway. I like the way McCown throws the ball to him. No, he's got a big arm. That was the first thing I. What's his arm like, John? I asked Rudy. He said, no, he's got a big arm now. There will be no problem with him trying to get it deep to Galloway. In your motion, Maurice Stovall in for Joey Galloway on first down. The play fake. There's some pressure. There's a flag on the play. McCown throws it out of bounds as he was out of the pocket. A couple of flags down, one near the line of scrimmage, one at the 40 yard line. We'll check it out. Ron Winter. Holding. Defense number 66. A five yard penalty and a first down. On the defensive tackle, well, Brian Young. And I think he was holding the offensive guard so that Charles Grant could come around on a stunt. And about three years ago, they outlawed that in pro football where the first guy coming through could not grab and hold an offensive lineman. Here's 66 right here. Oh, no, it's different. He, he just wraps up Ike Hilliard right around his neck as Ike was trying to get out on a route. Young, by the way, missed four games with a knee injury. McCown. Puts it up deep, way down for Galloway. He's got it, and he is down in just short of the goal line. He's down at the one yard line. Josh Bullocks took him down, but what a throw by McCown to Galloway. 60 yard pickup for the box. And that's the arm we were just talking about. Not a problem. Galloway's going to come out from the left of your screen. There he is. He's going to cut across on the post route. He ends up going almost to the corner, which he does there. Perfect throw. And then Bullock's able to shoelace him down right there at about the one yard line. We've come to the end of the first quarter. There's been plenty of action already and a lot more to come. Welcome back to New Orleans. Saints have no answer for Joey Galloway. Week two, four catches, 135 yards, two touchdowns. One quarter today, four catches, 130 yards. First and goal, Bucks at the one yard line. Ernest Graham didn't get in. Good job by the defensive front of the New Orleans Saints. The Saints have had problems all year with the deep ball. Watch Roman Harper, who's going to be right here in the middle of your screen. And what's going to happen is he's going to step up and see the run. Now he bites on that teaser route in front of him. Galloway right behind him. Wide open, deep void, the second half, the, the outside half. And McCown hooks up with him with a beautiful throw. That's all on Roman Harper. He's got to get deep to his half of the field. Askew and Graham in the backfield on second and goal from the one. It's McCown still has it. And he throws to Anthony Beck for a touchdown. A beautiful fake by Luke McCown. And a one yard touchdown pass to the tight end, Anthony Beck. And the Bucks have taken the lead. Beck's first catch of the season. And of course, his first touchdown. Boy, McCown is off to a marvelous start. He is 12 for 12 for 190 yards and a touchdown pass. And his first touchdown pass thrown since 2004. Extra point by Matt Bryan is good. And the Bucks have the lead for the second time in the game. McCown has been impressive. They love it on the Bucks bench. Sam, here's the touchdown by Luke McCown. Watch the play fake here on two-handed mesh point. That was really, really good. Just throws Scott Fujita out on the edge, who had Anthony Becton coverage. Fujita bit on the play fake hard, was down inside. McCown could have walked in. Instead, he gives it to Beck for his first touchdown of the season. Really, really good fake, good play call. Matt Bryan's kick is short. David Patton takes it at the 10, but he slips. Before he could get any kind of momentum going, Patton goes down at the 20 yard line. 
You wonder how Joey Galloway does it. We were talking with Ike Hilliard yesterday, who's been in the league a long time, 11 years, I think, for Ike. You know him. He's yeah. an old giant, played well up there. But he said, we asked him about Joey, and he, he said, Joey, for a guy in his mid 30s, 36 years old, he just wired different. He said, just the way that his body responds, he's still got the long speed, he's still got all the quicks, he takes great care of himself in and out of season. So that dude's just different than everybody else, what he can still do in his mid 30s. I love the way Gruden manages his practice time as well. On first down for the 20, Breeze goes short off the hands of Aaron Stecker. And threw it a little behind Stecker for the incompletion. You were mentioning Joey's practice plan. He basically has the first half of the week off. Right. Play on Sundays. And John Gruden said, look, when I got here, Joey came in, he had a torn groin. And it took him a while to repair from that and to rehab. So what they do now is they play on Sundays. He gets Monday off. Tuesday is the day off for all players. Then he gets Wednesday off. So that's really three full days off. So he's ready to go on Thursday. Reggie Bush with a good carry. That's a nifty run by Bush. Sometimes guilty of making too many moves. But that time some good moves as he got up close to the 30 yard line. Maybe a little short. Of the first down. There's the guy they got to get blocked right there, Javon Hay. They're going to get good push on him. Look at him right at his gap. Get a blocker up on Derek Brooks. They need to see more of that out of Reggie Bush, yeah. that vertical run game. They haven't had that kind of running since Deuce McAllister went out with the knee injury. It's been a couple of yards for Bush here and a couple there and occasional burst of speed, but no big ones. Play fake. Green still has it. And a first down as he goes out of bounds, chased by Derek Brooks. First down at the 33 yard line. Drew Brees, who ran for his first touchdown as a New Orleans Saint last week against Carolina, showed some nice mobility on that play. You know, the beauty of Drew Brees, and he is one of the most prolific quarterbacks in pro football when you reference back to the last four or five years in his numbers, he's only in year seven. I mean, he's got several good years left in front of him. Down here with the New Orleans Saints, and he loves it here. I know he and his family, the New Orleans area, they really, really appreciate the culture and, and being down here. Two tight ends in for the Saints on first down at the 33. Bush. He's run. That's a good pickup on first down. They picked up seven on the play. Good job up front by the offensive line. Gaines Adams made the tackle on Reggie Bush. Interesting talking to. to uh, uh, Breeze the other night about Reggie Bush and you see what happened here the other day about Reggie you see what happened here the first four games then the next four and then the last three of course the first four Deuce McAllister in the lineup but he said basically Reggie said I pointed out a couple of guys on tape that I told Reggie to watch Stepper in the backfield carries and comes up short of the first down about a yard short at the 42 it'll be third and one for the Saints. So in asking Breeze and finishing that story, he said, you know, what is it with Reggie? He goes, well, you know, I watched Breeze says, I watch quarterbacks in the league and I try to emulate some of the good things they do to improve my game. I told Reggie, watch a couple of backs. Watch guys week in and week out. And I said, which guys were those? He said, Brian Westbrook was a guy and Warwick Dunn was a guy. He said, watch those guys play and get a few ideas of how to be a productive running back here in pro football. Three wide receivers in, and now we have a timeout. And the Bucks use their second timeout of the first half. Timeout. Saints Seven have a third and one. Bucks have a 10-7 lead. Luke McCown has been the third quarterback inactive since week one. But today, the starter. And he is connecting with seven different receivers thus far in the game. Has moved the team brilliantly. Passed for 190 yards. Thrown the long ball, the short pass, and moved the Bucks. No, he's been impressive. And uh, Jeff Garcia right now can breathe easy. Here's the third and one, three wide receivers for the Saints. Buck showing blitz. Rondy Barber coming. Quick out to Colston and a great tackle on the play. Sammy Davis comes up. As the nickel defensive back and made a great tackle on Marcus Colston. He read that the whole way. Here's Colston, the big target. And you just need to break a tackle, get one yard. Sammy Davis was all over it. By the time Drew was getting his back step and hitching to throw the ball, Sammy Davis had already read the play and made the break on Colston. Steve Weatherford with his second punt of the game. Mike Hilliard is deep for the 
Bucks. Hilliard from the 22. Good return for Ike Hilliard. And after the whistle, the pushing and shoving. It heats up on the field. A lot of emotion. The first place Bucks, the second place Saints. 13 yard return by Ike Hilliard. Bucks lead it. Up as this game progresses, the interior offensive line by the Tampa Bay Bucks. Here's their coach Billy Muir, the O-line coach, and Gary Gibbs, the DC, with his three interior guys on the defensive triangle. So far, the run game, the wins will go to the Saints in the pass game. I'll go with the Bucks. The Saints have not gotten any gut pressure up on Luke McCown. Bucks start from the 35, the end around of Michael Clayton, and he's got room and speed and some power as well as he gets down to the 45 yard line of the Saints. A pickup of 20 on the play on the end around. Nice play calling again. John Gruden doing a good job mixing it up. Watch the outside block here by Maurice Stovall and Jason David. Look at the contrast in size. That's a guy 6'5 at least against a guy 5'8. Clears it out for Clayton on the end around. Boy, those guys have picked up some big plays. The rest of those Bucks for their young quarterback. They are helping him out. At the Saints, 45. Graham takes it outside. Graham fights off a couple of tacklers using the stiff arm on Josh Bullocks. He goes out of bounds at the 22 yard line, a pickup of 23 on the play. So two running plays, one to the left, one to the right. Pick up some big yardage for the Bucks. And terrific blocks, too, by the offensive line. Watch Fujita right here, and you're going to see blocks from here and from here on Fujita. Aaron Sears, look at that. They just wash him right out of there. As a matter of fact, they block him into Simino. Ernest Graham, a downhill runner, bounces it for a big pickup. On first down, the toss to Graham. And he gets a couple, fights for a little more, down to the 19. Tim, the Saints defense hasn't been able to stop the Bucks at all the Bucks this is their fourth possession they had a 65 yard drive for a field goal 44 yard drive missed field goal 80 yard drive touchdown now they've come from the 35 down to the Saints 19. Well they've been effective in run defense because there hasn't been a lot with the exception of that nice run there by Ernest Graham. The fact is they have been able to get pressure up front which has been a problem all year and they can't stop their nemesis Joey Galloway who has crushed them over the years. Michael Pittman who's been hurting with a bad ankle is back in the lineup and in the lineup now takes up pretty good takes a short pass and Fujita takes him down at the 16. Let's check out what's going on in Chicago and go to Kurt Menefee. All right the Bears holding on to a 7 nothing lead but the Giants staging a bit of a comeback. Derek Ward 31 yard run does not get into the end zone but he does a couple plays later so he eventually got the touchdown and tied the score at seven apiece. Sam and Tim take it away. Thanks Kurt. Giants have the first wild card playoff spot right now. Washington and Philadelphia both lost today. Six defensive backs in for the Saints on third down and a timeout. Sean Payton ran down the sideline to call a timeout. Did Time out. Obviously didn't like the personnel he had out there. Wants to talk things over. Third and four for the Bucks. Askew and Graham in the backfield. In motion, Alex Smith. Flag on the play. They stop the play. I think Trueblood jumped early. Ball start. Offense number 65. Five yard penalty. It remains third down. You and Ron Winter saw the same thing. <laughs> so now it becomes a third and long, third and nine, back to the 21 yard line. You can see how upset John is. Well, Gruden anytime is. you get penalties like that, John's not happy, but especially when they're down in the red zone, you're taking an opportunity away from points. Three wide receivers in. Maurice Stovall, the third. They split off Alex Smith. McCown. With time, he connects again to Joey Galloway. Slips one man and gets down to the 13-yard line. He's going to be a yard short, maybe a yard and a half short of the first down. Luke McCown with another completion now, 14 for 14. 
The team record is 18 straight completions. Well, and that's Jeff Garcia right this year. He looks real comfortable, does McCown. His offensive line, as we said earlier in the open, are going to lean on them to give him the protection. They've done that so far in this game. Matt Bryant. That penalty, though, the difference in getting yeah. the first down and not. Now they've got to try to settle for three instead of trying to get the touchdown. 31 yard try for Matt Bryant. He's one for two in the game. This one is right down the middle. And the Bucks put another three on the board. Luke McCown has led his team to 251 yards offense in less than a half. You know what the beauty of that is? Is the time of possession greatly favors the Tampa Bay Bucks, which means they're getting more plays, more reps, and you're keeping Drew Brees and that high octane offense over there sitting on the bench. Don't forget. Following football action, it's the OT with a complete wrap up of the NFL action. And from the OT, we got the exclusive BCS selection show. We'll find out who's going to the BCS Bowls and who will play in the All State BCS Championship game. It's coming up exclusively on Fox. Well, one of those BCS Bowls, the Sugar Bowl. And earlier this year, in January, it was LSU and Notre Dame. The mighty Quinn, Brady Quinn, at a 14-14 time at LSU, broke away and won it 41-14. And Notre Dame hasn't been the same. LSU's hoping to maybe be in here in the Superdome for the BCS championship game. Looks like they're going to keep their coach, too, in less miles, right? Yes, Lance Moore on the return from the two yard line. It had been packed earlier. Moore with a good return. Jermaine Phillips stopped what could have been a huge return as he took him down at the 33 yard line. So, what do you think? Ohio State sitting back with their season done. Missouri got knocked off by Oklahoma. West Virginia beaten by Pitt. And Ohio State sitting at 11 and 1. Will LSU jump up? Will Georgia get the bid? What do you think? The All State BCS you saw, selection you saw who show. I <laughs> <laughs> Probably going to be LSU, right? There's a chance. Flag on the play. It's going to be offside against Tampa Bay. Free play for Breeze, and he connects with a fullback, Mike Carney, who's knocked out of bounds at the 37 yard line. The Bucks were offside. Offside. Defense number 55 in the neutral zone to snap. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. Monty Kiffin, the defensive coordinator of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Boy, he's been there for a long time and done a great job. One of the job. best. No question. One of the best. They take the penalty. It brings up a first and five for the Saints at the 38 yard line. They bring in two tight ends. Third penalty of the game against the Bucks. Reggie Bush. He stopped after a pickup of about a yard. It's really tough, I think, Tim, for Reggie Bush Bush to run inside. He doesn't seem like he's comfortable running inside. Well, I think in college he was just so used to to, to bouncing it and being able to out athlete everybody and could run around guys. That doesn't work in pro football. I mean, there's just too much speed on the field and, and a lot of times you see that he's chasing ghosts making cuts all over the place when there's nobody there. I have seen times in particular the Giants game last year when Reggie does get it cranked up. He's quite capable Sam of hitting things right up the gut. On second and three Bush gets a first down to the 45 yard line. And the Bucks pulling for the ball. Tato June trying to rip it out of Bush's hands. Everybody that plays Reggie Bush tries to rip it out of his hands because he hasn't been great with ball security since he's been here. So if you show that on film more than once, every time a guy gets a chance to wrap you up, they're trying to rip the pick skin out. David Patton and Lance Moore come in at the wide receiver spots. Three wide receivers in for the Saints. Reggie Bush, five carries, 25 yards. Saints have first down at their own 45. There's the running you want to see from Reggie Bush. If you're a New Orleans Saints fan, and Cato June gets in his face, 
as they go face guard to face guard and are separated. 14 yard pickup for Reggie Bush. Well, what happened is they caught this front. For the Tampa Bay Bucks in a little twist game and watch it develop. Javon Hay moves inside, the backers flow to the outside, and Reggie finds a crease. But even on that play, with the hole as big as it was, couldn't you see him apprehensive in terms of going right, going left, instead of just hitting it downhill? It is a mindset for Reggie Bush, I'm telling you. At the Bucks 41 on first down, the play fake. Breeze wants to go deep. Way down for David Patton, and it's incomplete. Fans wanted an interference call. Bernard Jackson, the safety, was back there along with Jermaine Phillips, I believe, was the other man covering on the play. Both safeties back deep. That's number 73. You'll see Tenard Jackson pick penalty. him up. Repeat first down. And run with it. Boy, what an adjustment to almost get that by David Patton slipping underneath. And probably should have had it. There was a flag on the play holding against Jari Evans. The right guard. And that sets the Saints back 10 yards. They'll bring up a first and 20. Drew Brees has come to the sideline to talk to, with Sean Payton. Brees leads the NFL in pass attempts. He leads the NFL and pass completions. Take a look at the playoff picture in the NFC. The first place teams are Dallas, Green Bay, Seattle, and Tampa Bay. The wild card leaders are the Giants and now Minnesota, because Minnesota beat Detroit. Oh, they whomped them today, 42 to 10. Detroit has now lost four in a row. They're, they're in sliding trouble. and Minnesota's no, in trouble. moving you, up. You look at the remaining schedule for both of those teams, and I would say Minnesota has a much better chance of reaching the postseason as a wild card than Detroit. Now the Bears are the Bears are five and six, and the Giants seven and four. We mentioned they're in a uh, wild card playoff spot, but the Saints are five and six. So a win today would certainly move them into position to challenge in the wild card race. Absolutely, and I think that you look at the Redskins losing today, the Philadelphia Eagles losing today. It just to me illustrates a better chance in the NFC South, even if you don't win the division, being able to get in as a wild card with a nine and seven, ten and six record. From the 49, Bush on the delay, looking for an opening. Not much there. He gets two yards into Bucks territory. Ryan Sims, in a defensive tackle, made the stop. And I think the more they can get a running game going, with Reggie Bush there, and there's Deuce McAllister and Aaron Stecker, and the guys they will try to get get some run pops with. It's going to help against Tampa's defense because what you need to do against Tampa is you've got to force that extra safety most of the time Jermaine Phillips up here into the combat zone to play the run then it opens stuff in the passing game you get an extra defender out of that umbrella cover three wide receivers they split Reggie uh, Stecker out and flags fly as the Bucks jump across they claim that somebody on the Saints line moved and I believe they did a false start looks like it's on Jamar Nesbitt the left guard. Ball start. Offense number 78. A five yard penalty. Remain second down. They decide John Stinchcomb, the right tackle, moved first. False start on the Saints. And this is where you don't want to get against Tampa's defense. Second or third and extra long. Because they're so clever, they're so creative in their zones and what they can do. They've got a great feel for all the, the hot spots. And then they count on that front four when you're in the long situations to get the pressure on second and 23 empty backfield everybody out Breeze gets time goes to Aaron Stecker slipped one man and then is hit hard forward progress to the 46 yard line and that will bring up a third and long they have to get to the 31 for a first down Saints love to throw the football when they're on when they're Accurate and when there are no turnovers, no interceptions, they have been dominant. They have been. If you don't pressure, if you don't pressure Drew Brees, it's like flag football. He's going to pick you apart. And he's just too good in understanding all his pre-snap reads and his patience and his accuracy is is off the hook. Everybody out. Brees going deep again. This one to Devery Henderson. Touchdown. The speedy Debrie Henderson 
who has burned the Bucks in the past. A perfect throw from Drew Brees. Monty Kiffin can't believe it. Tenard Jackson was in great shape to make a play, and then he just turned away at the last minute. They run he uh, Devery Henderson out of the slot, get the matchup they want on the linebacker, Barrett Rude, who's running deep with him. Then he gets help from Tenard Jackson, who was in great position, and he just let the ball go right over the top. 45-yard touchdown pass. Breeze to Henderson. The extra point by Mare is good. And the Saints have the lead. There he is coming out of the slot. There's the matchup on Barrett Rue. Now you'll see Tenard Jackson come to pick him up. Now watch, great position, and then turns his head at the last second. I don't know what he was seeing there. I mean, if you see that ball in the air, I don't think he, he must not have ever seen the ball in the air. He was in a great position to go knock it down, just right down the seam. Here's the guy in Tenard Jackson. Well, we're getting a passing show today, Tim. Luke McCown and Drew Brees throwing some bombs out there. What a catch by Henderson. Two touchdown passes for Drew Brees gives him 20 on the season. Fourth straight season in which he's had at least 20 touchdown passes. His career high 27 when he was with the Chargers in 2004. Devery Henderson's third touchdown reception and with his 125th career touchdown pass he moves by Archie Manning a big time hero here in New Orleans Boy, that was a super throw I just don't know what Tenard Jackson saw there's no way he could have saw that football in the air he had to have lost it because you saw him turn his head at the last second away from the football now the Saints back in the lead for the second time Mare's kick is short to Clayton at the 11th running hard gets across the 30 and he is brought down at about the 34 yard line 22 yard return check out what's happening next week on the NFL on Fox it all begins at noon Eastern 9 Pacific with the built Ford tough Fox NFL Sunday pregame show some of the games we'll have for you the Cowboys and the Lions Carolina at Jacksonville and Tampa Bay at Houston about those Cowboys rolling out at 11 and 1 right now. The Saints will be in Atlanta next week. Play fake by McCown. Being rushed. He throws, completes it to Askew, the fullback. And Askew gets up to the 45 yard line. And the streak continues for Luke McCown. 15 consecutive completions. Watch Brian Young right there. He wants a holding call on Davin Joseph. If he's moving up inside, just gets enough pressure there. You saw Davin's hand across his chest. Ron Winter does not make the call. First down for a 13 yard pickup. Are you kidding me? They throw it back to McCown. McCown throws and that's incomplete. A double pass. From Ernest Graham back to Luke McCown, and that is the first incompletion thrown by Luke McCown in the game. Well, John Gruden's been cooking up some stuff. Yeah, he has. Look at the direct snap. Right to Ernest Graham. Now he rolls out, comes back to McCown. McCown wanted Galloway deep, but they had him covered up deep. So he tries to get it underneath, as you said, his first incompletion. <laughs> had to count on a double pass to get him to be errant with the rock. Second and ten. Toss to Graham. Couple of blockers. Graham turns it up and a hard collision. Graham and Bullocks. Josh Bullocks, the safety coming up for the hit on Ernest Graham, who gets across midfield down to the Saints 49 yard line. It'll bring up a third and five. That's where Josh Bullocks is at his best as a body rocket tackler in the box. We saw earlier in the game he had trouble on the deep pass coming out of Nebraska. He's best suited, in my opinion, to be up there almost as an extra linebacker playing the run tough. Graham, eight carries, 39 yards. We're down to the two minute warning. Oh, the pack Superdome is loud. The Saints have a one point lead. Three wide receivers in, Clayton the third. 
They got Galloway in the slot. Timeout, Bucks. That's their last timeout. Man, was that crowd loud. You know they practice with noise machines during the week. I don't know if you can replicate how loud that crowd was. Well, and they need to have the crowd cranked up here. They call it dome field advantage, and they haven't been very good. I mean, this year, two and three at home. You go back to 2000, I think they've got a losing record here at the Superdome. Take a look at the playoff situation in the AFC. Patriots, Indianapolis with a big win today. Pittsburgh playing later. San Diego, seven and five. They won today. Jacksonville lost. Cleveland is trailing, but both those teams leading the wild card race in the AFC. Good friends on the sidelines, the head coaches. Peyton worked for John Gruden in Philadelphia. That doesn't matter now. Third and five bucks. Everybody out. McCown being chased by Grant. And he picks up the first down. Good mobility by Luke McCown getting the first down on the scramble. Well, finally, New Orleans got some pass rush. They don't get the payoff. He ends up getting the first down, but Charles Grant coming around the corner finally threatened Luke McCown. Boy, what? for a guy who hasn't started a game since 2004, he is right in his groove. Look at those numbers. He's had an amazing performance thus far in the first half. I don't think John Gruden could have asked for more. The Saints look like they've used the timeout here. And both teams are out of timeouts with a minute 46. Luke McCown starting here. His brother Josh started in Oakland. Now I, I believe Demarcus uh, Jamarcus Demarcus will Russell, play some. Uh, yeah, I think so. Russell is playing in that game. But uh, interesting, fourth time that brothers have started in the NFL on the same day. And they even got an older brother. I think there was a QB at Texas A&M years ago. So the the QB is in the family. And it was funny talking to John Green. He said, "Yeah, we're optimistic, but frankly, because we don't know. I haven't seen the guy on Sundays. No. So far, so good for number 12 right there. Got to be loving it. First and ten at the 41. McCown short to Graham, but Gucita right there to wrap him up." At the 39, they may give him forward progress to the 38 yard line. Neither team has a timeout remaining. Both teams have led twice in this game. Michael Clayton in as a third wide receiver. Everybody out. McCown to Graham, wide of him. Kevin Case for was covering on the play. And it'll bring up a third and seven for the Bucks. You know what you got to appreciate, and you see the play selection there, 19 to 10 pass to, to the rush, but John Gruden has not held back one bit. And this has been a wide open passing attack. He's going to a bunch of different guys. It started with some underneath stuff, and then they got the deep ball involved, and McCown is doing it all right now. Six defensive backs in for the Saints. Third and seven. Everybody out. McCown leaping grab by Galloway for a first down at the 28 yard line. Josh Bullocks with a big hit. Galloway holding on on a 10 yard pickup for the Bucks. Clock running with a minute to go. The Bucks certainly within field goal range now. Michael Pittman is back in. He's taped up. McCown. That time, good pressure by Ronaldo Wynn. He just overran the tackle. Second sack of the game. And the clock's going to continue to run. Don't penalize the defense for making a great play. Here it goes. See, down under 29 seconds there. It's a tough play getting sacked. McCown calling the play at the line on second down. Short drop. Connects with Ike Hilliard. Flag on the play. Hilliard couldn't get out of bounds. And we'll see what the call. offensive pass interference. So a sack and a penalty is taking Tampa Bay out of field goal range. And I think the right call. Pass interference. Offense number 19. A 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. Now if the offensive player and you're going to see is right here Ike Hilliard. And there's the push right there. 
on Jason Kraft if an offensive player gives an overt push to gain separation and give himself an advantage they're going to call offensive pass interference OPI that was the right call. 15 seconds remaining Bucks are out of field goal range now they need a big pickup and have to get out of bounds. Everybody out. The pass short to Pittman he's wrestled down right away by Scott Shanley at the 44 yard line. Clock running. Can they get a playoff. They spike it with no time on the clock. That's it. The half is over. The Bucks were in field goal range. And John is oh, hot. Boy. The sack by Ronaldo Wynn and the offensive interference penalty took him out of field goal range. And I'll tell you what you did is you gave some momentum to New Orleans who here on these last three plays came up with some big pressure defensively. The Visa halftime report with Kirk Terry Howie and Jimmy is coming up. They've got highlights. They've got scores. They've got the latest on from the Fox Sports ticker. It's coming up next. New Orleans Saints leading 14 to 13 and the Saints will receive the kickoff to start the second half. Hard to believe that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers put up 285 yards offense in the first half and they're trailing. A couple of big throws by Breeze, the big one to Colston, and of course the touchdown over the top to Devery Henderson. Matt Bryant kicking it off. Lance Moore is deep for the Saints, and here we go, second half. Moore from the three. And he's tripped up. Good coverage and a good tackle. Ryan Neese with the tackle. We go to the sideline to Eric Ritchie. Hey guys, Sean Payton very pleased with the way his defense has responded in that second half as far as uh, second quarter. Getting Joey Galloway, keeping him in front of him after he burned him for those 120 yards in the first quarter. Coach Payton has been very impressed with Luke McCown, not only throwing the ball, but he says we have to do a better job containing him on the ground. As far as John Gruden is concerned, he simply said, fellas, we got to score more points. Well said. Thank you, Eric. Saints start from the 20 yard line Reggie Bush in the backfield Lance Moore and Marcus Colson the wideouts raised with time and it's dropped by Reggie Bush. Barrett Rood was covering on the play. It has not been a big first half for it wasn't a big first half receiving for Reggie Bush he actually ran the ball pretty well with seven carries for 41 yards rushing slight edge to Tampa Bay big yardage advantage for the Bucks. here's Bush carrying gets a couple of yards to the 22 and bring up a third and eight big advantage with the time of possession and for Drew Brees no turnovers is a good thing what did he tell us on Friday he said if we turn the ball over two or more times we lose period right. there's just no chance I've gone back he said and Referenced all the games, no turnover in the first half. Bodes well here for New Orleans. Greg White is in at defensive end for the Bucks. He leads the Bucks in sacks. There's the numbers: five wins, one turnover in each game, six losses, two or more turnovers. Here's third and eight, four in motion. Everybody out. Three steps up, nobody open. Takes off. Flag on the play. He's got enough for the first down and slides down at the 37-yard line. But we'll check out the flag. I'm not sure sure it's not going to be on Eric Johnson getting on the back of Greg White and just pulling him to the ground. Holding. Offense number 82. A 10 yard penalty. Repeat third down. Is that a striped shirt you're wearing? I can just see it from up here. Watch Greg White going to turn the corner and just as he's getting that lean down. Oh yeah. Eric Johnson didn't even have to do it but wrapped him up from behind. I'll tell you Greg White that guy is a terrific terrific athlete leads them in sacks but what a story he's been all year for Tampa Bay. I can't believe you got him to do a backflip before the game. I mean, the guy's been a, a, when you look at his athleticism and you'll see some good stuff that will illustrate that but the guy on the football field what a what a fun guy yeah. to watch this year for for Tampa Bay keep your eye on him. Great story they have to get to the 30 for first down Reggie Bush brought down just as he caught it Brian Kelly came up and made a good tackle. So the penalty hurts the Saints and they've got to punt it away. Now this was before the game. This is a big man Greg White. Look, Look at that. that. 290 pounds up and over. Not a problem. And I then, said dog how long you been doing that. He says I wasn't even warmed up. No you went up to him and said now watch. Here's how the, you're supposed to do it. 
Uh, there's, look at that big smile. Yeah. Give me Greg a diving White. board and a swimming pool and maybe. <laughs> Steve Weatherford from the goal line. Philip Buchanan looking for some room on the return. He's brought down by Troy Evans. Beautiful tackle by one of the best coverage men for the New Orleans Saints, Troy Evans. So Buchanan lost some yardage, but the Bucs will start from their own 45 when we come back. McCown spiked the ball. He was charged with an incompletion. So he is 18 for 21, 230 yards in the game. From the 45 er is Graham. And in a mark, Simino fights his way forward for three yards. Simino makes the tackle. 285 yards in the first half. Third most yards picked up in a half by the Bucks since Here, 1991. Here's the beauty of it. They've been doing it with the guy that's been running as their third quarterback all year long. Not good right there, Charles oh, Grant. Boy. Who's, looks like he's retweaked an ankle injury that has been problematic for him for about a month and a half. He's replaced by Ronaldo Wynn, who has a sack in the game. Second and seven for the Bucks. Askew and Graham in the backfield. Hilliard motions. It's Graham. And doesn't get much. Gets up to midfield and bring up a third and five. Remember we talked about working that inside triangle and who's going to win the run game right in here on the interior when you talk about both guards in the center. Look what Hollis Thomas does right there to Aaron Sears. Pushes him back. Brian Young. Everybody getting squeezed at the line of scrimmage. That's how it's supposed to work. And then the safeties and the linebackers from the back end can come up and fill accordingly. That was perfect. Antoine Lake comes in at defensive tackle. Bucks have three wide receivers with Michael Clayton. McCown out of the shotgun on third and five. Everybody out. Pressure. McCown looking and he finds Ernest Graham a first down at the 43 yard line. A good throw on the move by Luke McCown. You kidding me. Did Garcia give him the magic wand before the game today. Wow. They talked playing like a 10 year veteran. Look at the poise as he rolls out of the pocket just keeps his eye down the field. And finds Graham for the first down. McCown, Very impressed with McCown. McCown was here early. He was out on the field tossing the ball. He was here four hours early. And Jeff Garcia comes in wheeling his suitcase and stops in the middle of the field. And they <laughs> talked for about 10 minutes about what was going to happen today. First down for the Bucks. Everybody out. Short drop. McCown holds it down. Looks, looks, being pressured. Nice move. And that pass is complete. A catch by Ike Hilliard at the 37. How about keeping himself together, poised under pressure? You know why? Because he believes in his athleticism. He knows that he's got athleticism in the tank. And he can roll out there. He can escape traffic. He can get away from guys. All at the same time, keeping his eyes down the field, trying to locate his receivers. Look at all these different guys he's thrown to in the football game today. And the big play is going to Joey Galloway. Eight different receivers. Galloway, six catches, 148 yards. He's nearing a personal best. Deep drop. Outside to ask you the fullback. Slips one man and another. He's got a first down out of bounds at the 25 yard line. BJ Askew becoming a part of the offense. We knew he could, he's been a key man blocking, but they've worked him into the offense. This was what we were. Look at, look at. There's McCown that's, earlier. That's three and a half hours pregame. He's already out there warming up. He was ready to go, stretching. Ask you three catches, 41 yards. This is Ernest Graham breaking two tackles. He's heading for the corner. He fights it off. Touchdown. Ernest Graham with a tremendous run. And the Bucks have regained the lead. Graham's seventh rushing touchdown of the season. There's a flag on the play. Twenty five yard touchdown run for Graham. And I think the flag came after the play. I 
As the officials discuss it, here comes Ron Winter. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness defense, personal foul, unnecessary roughness offense, those penalties offset, result of the play is a touchdown. So Ernest Graham with a terrific run. He's become the bell cow here. And you got to like that a guy who started the season as the third running back and because Andre has become the bell cow and has been over four yards a pop and close to 700 yards in a relief roll. And as he told us last week he's still learning. The moves that he, he may have forgotten with a couple of years of not running the football from scrimmage. Matt Bryant's extra point is good. The leads continue to change hands. Third time in the game, the Bucks have had the lead. A 25-yard touchdown run by Ernest Graham puts them out in front. They lead it 20 to 14. Here's the touchdown run. The circles are good. They get good blocks. The X is bad with Roman Harper there. He's got to make this tackle. I mean, there's some good blocks. There's the crease. You need your safety to come up in the hole and get that running back down. It was a bad angle. He was late on his fill, and Graham is going to run right through arm tackles. Graham has used that straight arm a couple of times to fight off would-be tacklers in this game. Matt Bryant's kick is short. Lance Moore steps up to the 13. And he is taken down. That is, again, a great tackle. Great coverage on the play. Will Allen down in a hurry. Bucks coverage is outstanding. One of the best in the league. Ernest Graham has put the Bucks in the lead again. Going to have to play better today. So far, that has not been the case. The 20 yard plays, they've been bad all year at giving up those big plays. No change so far today. Two passes, three runs all over the 20 yards. Reggie Bush on first down, no gain on the play. Good work up front. By the Bucks, led by Barrett Rude, the middle linebacker. You know, Gaines Adams is getting better, and I want you to watch him right here, but I want you to watch as this guy, Jari Evans, pulls around and locks up on him. Watch this. Here's what you call finishing in pro football. Good job by Gaines Adams. Uh oh, not no. now. Jari Evans is with him, with him, with him, takes him all the way out of the picture and puts him on his back. Jari Evans, another success story out of the Reggie Bush put the ball on the ground, but he got a first down up to the 30 yard line. Nice rush. Good run by Reggie Bush, his 10th of the game. 55 yards running and uh, with a little limp. Reggie Bush heading for the sideline. Left leg problem for Reggie. He's had a bruised chin. Straight downhill, and you can tell that this is what they want to do with Reggie. But watch this guy, Jermaine Phillips, who's been a body rocker all year. Pow! Go and knock that football out. Aaron Stecker in the backfield. Two tight ends in on first down. Stecker cuts it back. Picks up about five. Up close to the 35 yard line. It'll be second five. Listen to what goes on with the popping down on the field. You want some of that, Sam? No. We'll get down there in the mix. Bush, who's been bothered by a bruised chin, was okay this week. Patrick Chikora in at defensive end now for the Bucks. Trying to set up a screenplay. Jump pass to Stecker. And he gets up close to the first down. He is brought down at the 40. He's about a yard short of the first down marker. Cato June making the stop. As the Saints mix it up. This is their sixth offensive possession of the game. They have alternated punts and touchdowns. This would be their touchdown possession. Time to score. Got to look at it that way. If you're consistent, Terrence Copper in, Devery Henderson in, four wide receivers on third and one. With Aaron Stecker in the backfield, quarterback sneak by Breeze. There's a penalty. But a false start. False start against the Saints. They jumped the gun trying to get that one yard for the first down. Saints say it's against the uh, the Bucks, but I thought the signal was false start. Let's see. False start. Offense. Left guard. Number 70. 
Sean Five Payton yard disagrees penalty. with the call. It remains third down. He is he he's, he's yelling how could you miss the call <laughs> as he felt the Bucks were offside on the play. Keep your eye on 55. I thought the ball moved before it came across. But the penalty goes against the Saints. Now they call a timeout. They've got a third and six coming up. And Sean Payton wants to talk to the officials. He didn't like that call at all. All he called Ron Winter. Ron Winter, the referee, did go over and talk with him. But look here, like he didn't blow the call. Yeah, it was Jamal Brown. Just a fraction early, the left tackle there, number 70, who came off the line of scrimmage before Fain had snapped the ball. It was the right call Absolutely. by Ron Winter and his guys. Reggie Bush splits out to the right side. Third and six, they have to get to the 41 for a first down. Everybody out. Reese has time now. Closed on him in a hurry, gains Adams. And Greg White combined for the sack on Drew Brees, first sack of the game for the Bucks on Drew Brees, who is the most best protected quarterback in the league. Greg White's flying inside. They have a double tackle and stunt game going on right there. Greg White flies inside. Javon Hay goes outside, and it was the same thing on the other side. And Gaines Adams, who's really starting to come along now as their first round pick comes in and converges for the sack. Weatherford's punt. I Kenyard with the grab and the return flag on the play as he gets up to the 38 yard line. That sack was only the ninth sack given up by the Saints fewest in the league. But it's been hard to hard to get after him and you love the the, the T.E. games they call it tackle and stunts on both sides. How it ended During up being return, productive. Holding. Number 22 of the return team. A 10 yard penalty. First down. Sammy Davis. On the return by Ike Hilliard, called for a holding, but the Bucks have a six point lead on the Saints. 77 yards and two touchdowns as San Diego beat Kansas City 24 to 10. On first down, Ernest Graham fighting for a yard. He has 70 yards rushing today, 12 carries, 70 yards, just added one. Reggie Bush 10 carries 56 yards good average for them in the game Grant Graham had the 25 yard touchdown run Charles Grant is back on at defensive end for the New Orleans Saints McCown still has it rolling throwing short to Alex Smith and the tight end barrels his way across the 30 to the 31 and he's got a first down. You like all the details that Luke McCown is going through right here. Watch the play action fake. Is he just going to show that mesh point? That looks pretty good. I'm sure the backers bid on it. And then the play called a challenge Charles Grant. Roll out his way. You know he's been out of the game already with an ankle. He's back in. The ankle's been bothering. Check out his wheels. McCown went out there and exploited him and got it easily to his tight end. Ninth different receiver that McCown is connected with in the game. On first down, Michael Clayton in motion. Timeout Saints. Teams using timeouts early. Saints have only one remaining. Don't forget, following the game, it's the OT as the guys in the studio will check out all the scores and highlights around the NFL. And that's followed by exclusive coverage of the All State BCS Selection Show. Find out where the best teams in college football will go in the BCS Championship Series, what bowl games they go to, and of course, who will play in the All State BCS Championship game. It's all coming up. Here on Fox last night what a game Washington got out to a 21 nothing lead on Hawaii unbeaten Hawaii but how about Hawaii coming back defense strong late in the game stopped Washington and Hawaii won at 35 28 there's the question they're the undefeated team can they get into the national title game probably not will I, they be here in the Sugar Bowl I like them in the Sugar Bowl yeah. right here in New Orleans. LSU could they be in a championship game against Ohio State Anthony Davis is an eligible receiver now McCown's calling a timeout okay 
Timeout, Tampa Bay. They they use their first of the second half, and John Gruden is upset. Wow. John is letting out off a lot of steam here. Grew daddy's changing colors on oh us boy. right there Sam. He he is really upset. <laughs> he wants an explanation from on Ron, Ron Winter. Hey how much fun is he to talk to though every time we get a chance oh, to great. sit and talk with John Gruden and his passion for football. Passion for football very direct and forthright gives he, he helps you know about what's going on and plus he's a funny guy. Was Garcia call him the mad scientist? That's right. Like how you're say, tell me about Drew and he just because he's funny, man. Anthony Davis is eligible. Graham carries, gets some blocking up front, pushes the pile up close to the 39 yard line. Looks like they'll spot it at the 38. It's a good pickup by Graham on first down. Graham has had two 100 yard rushing games this season. You know both of these teams have lost their their running backs early in the year. We know about Deuce McAllister and Carnell Williams and Tampa Bay has not missed a step with Ernest Graham. They really have not done a good job. Reggie Bush on the bench. Hilliard in motion. On second down Graham behind Askew. Put his head down gets up across the 40 to the 41. Just looks like he's a little short of the first down. Scott Shanley made the tackle. Here's what I've been talking about since Cadillac went down, since Deuce went down, the Saints have rolled at 3 5, 4 0 for the Tampa Bay Bucks. And that, that four yard threshold is what you want to shoot for as an offensive running football team. So good stuff for Tampa. And give a lot of credit to that offensive line, no matter who the back is. An offensive line for Billy Muir and John Gruden have played well. This is third and half a yard. Three tight ends in. Graham. And he's got plenty for the first down up to the 45 yard line. Good, strong push up front by the Bucks offensive line. And the guy they'll want to go behind is right over here, Aaron Sears, the left guard. He is going to pull up, get inside, and then watch the push that he gets. They're just going to get right on his back end. There's the push. Just the surge, and then Graham does the rest for the short yardage pickup. Wade, the center, did a good job up front as that well. That interior, you know, John Wade gets no credit. A lot of the credit going to those guards. Wade has had a nice year in the middle, snapping the football. On first down, the play fake. McCown still has it. Wanted to go deep, goes short instead, and it's dropped. Haven't been too many drops. This time it was Michael Bennett with the drop. Little things like this Gruden appreciates and we talked about it earlier the ability just to show a fake look at him tuck the ball nonchalantly go back you see the good quarterbacks do that watch Peyton Manning watch Tom Brady watch the upper echelon QBs in this league and how they sell play action you know it's only one game and he's getting extensive time for the first time in three years but it's pretty impressive Luke McCown's done a good job timeout. Saints and they've used all their timeouts in the second half and we still have 320 to go in the third quarter. So some confusion. Last night number two lost again number seventh time this season that a number two team was beaten West Virginia losing to Pitt. That thumb injury. Th yeah. uh, White got that thumb injury, and that was it. The quarterback, they had to use their second string quarterback. Pitt was inspired. I am happy for Dave Wanstead, yeah. though. And where will West Virginia go in the BCS Bowls? Don't forget, exclusive coverage on the Allstate BCS honestly, selection show. Just, honestly, not. I'm not a homer. I'm not being biased. Is yeah. there anybody playing better than USC right now? USC is playing very no, you well. You didn't answer right? the question. Is there anybody playing, playing better, better than USC right now? I would say no. Thank you. Michael Pittman has split out to the right side. McCown with time, and it's off the hands of Hilliard incomplete. Well covered by Jason David. 
Mike Hilliard has enjoyed a revival, hasn't he? A he couple does. of years ago, people thought he was done. He said he's having fun again. He said if he can get that ankle right, which has dogged him all year, he said he can go another three or four years. You know what he said he's doing? Honestly, gave all the credit to Joey Galloway and to Jeff Garcia. He said, I'm just picking up the pieces and all the underneath stuff. Those are the guys that make this thing go. Real humble guy and humble conversation with Ike. Grew up outside of New Orleans. His uncle, Dalton Hilliard, was a star with the Saints. McCown trying to give everybody the play. Gets it off, throws. It's intercepted by Mike McKenzie. He's got blockers. McKenzie all the way. Touchdown, Saints. Galloway never turned and looked for the ball. Well, they dialed up a zero blitz. Gary Gibbs comes at the right time with an all-out blitz. Clearly, clearly Luke McCown thought he was going to get the hot read on the double move to Galloway. Joey never sees it, never even turns back to the football. And Mike McKenzie is waiting right there to pick off the interception and take it back for six. Second touchdown of the season for Mike McKenzie. His third interception, two return for touchdowns. Huge play by the Saints defense. And they lead. Back and forth they go. Each team has led three times in the game. 53 yard interception and touchdown return by Mike McKenzie. I'll tell you if if Luke McCown doesn't make that throw that bad throw underneath and takes it over the top Galloway is here's Galloway here he's going to do a little stutter and go and what happens is McCown's seeing all this blitz come in his face so he throws the quick throw McKenzie's right there to pick it off if he holds that a fraction longer realizing that he has enough time that the blitz had been picked up he'd have found Joey Galloway easily for that slant and go for six points. Five lead changes in this game. And now it's the Saints who are up 21 to 20. And the fans continue to be loud. First big mistake made by Luke McCown in the game. Now, how will he respond? That's the question. I mean, he's been great to this point. How thick is his skin now that he's thrown a touchdown that went back the other way for, and, for the defense? And will Gruden change his approach? No way. Will he get conservative? No, no way. Okay. With what he has showed in the first half, I sure wouldn't get conservative with Luke McCown. Michael Clayton deep to receive the kick of Alindo Mare. Clayton at the five. He's got the wedge in front of him. Oh, he's brought down. That's a great coverage on the play by the Saints. Osama Young. Roman Harper was down there. And the tackle at the 23 yard line. Here's Drew Brees just moments ago with a team around him. Saints know how vital this game is to their chances. Breeze. Boy, that's unlike him. Only 13 passes in the game. Now they've only been on the field for just a little over 16 minutes in the football game. Through almost three quarters. Graham and Askew in the backfield. Movement on the line. And flags fly everywhere. False start. Now here's that, here's that home field advantage they want here in the dome. Getting that noise cranked up. Full start. Offense number 78. Five yard penalty. And they first down. The offensive line cannot hear the snap or the cadence coming from the, the quarterback. So really they're at the same as the defense. They've got to watch the ball and go on ball movement. The Bucs have to do something to get this crowd quieted down. Is it me or is this crowd get more cranked up in the afternoon games? Fujita wrapped him up. He gets back to the original line of scrimmage, the 22. That'll bring up a second and 10. Saints coming in at five and six. A win would put them 
one game behind the Bucks in the division and even for the second wild card spot in the NFC Anthony backed in at tight end for the Bucks Beck motions McCown completes it to Joey Galloway it's a first down at the 34. Let's check out the Browns and the Cardinals and go to Kurt Menefee. All right. Thanks a lot Sam. Check out this play. Derek Anderson finds Braylon Edwards. Edwards makes the catch goes down but no one from Arizona touched him so he gets back up takes it in from 67 yards out and it's a 21 18 lead right now Cardinals holding on. Let's go back to Sam and Tim. Thank you Kurt. Cleveland Browns seven and four. Arizona one of those five and six teams in the NFC play fake McCown with time nobody open and he runs for it and he's got a first down look at McCown go into Saints territory down the sideline out of bounds at the Saints 40 yard line beautiful run by Luke McCown 26 yards and a nice block in the open field by Alex Smith his tight end too. He has got underrated athleticism. Now he's going to flash out, tuck it to run. Here's the block right there by 81 on Simino, which is going to give McCown another 15 or 20 yards. That's the fourth running play of 20 yards or more for the Bucks. First down at the 40, two tight ends in, the toss to Graham. Gets around the corner, and there's that stiff arm again. And a flag on the play. Graham is taken out of bounds. Two flags go down. I'm not so sure they're not going to get Michael Clayton for a late hit after a face mask, what looked like on Ernest Graham. Clayton comes over to clean up a defender on the sideline after the play was over. You see the pained expression on Michael Clayton's face, knowing that it seems like he got called, and the official there said white 80, and that's McLean. Uh, that's Michael Clayton, excuse me. Luke McCown has two rushes for 34 yards in the game. You got to love Michael Clayton's zest and ability to get after, but you've got to be There's smarter two fouls than that. On the play. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 29. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. 80 number offense by rule those penalties offset will replay first down and here's Graham you'll see him running down the sideline Bullock's 29 is going to get the face mask and there's that I mean you can see he's clearly got him wrapped up that's a head turner now out of bounds out of bounds here comes the whistle and then Clayton flashes in to clean up Josh Bullock's can't do that and Clayton's as John Gruden said he's nuts he's tough he gets after it. But you got to be more intelligent than that. Keep your ears open when you hear the whistle. Gruden is hot about it right now. So that play is negated. Final minute of the third quarter. Bucks with a first down. First and 10 at the Saints 40. Two tight ends in. Beckton Smith. Alex Smith motions. Ernest Graham. Fighting for. Yardage gets about two and a half on the play before he's thrown back. Hollis Thomas and Mike McKenzie combining on the tackle. Mike McKenzie is one player who will go to Sean Taylor's funeral tomorrow in Miami. There will be, uh, be a players few guys. from both yep. teams going. Ike Hilliard will be going. Philip Buchanan of Tampa Bay will be going. And the final seconds of the third quarter will be ticking off. Luke McCown heading to the sideline. Third quarter comes to an end. Five lead changes in the game. The New Orleans Saints lead the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 21 to 20. Tampa Bay Buccaneers in first place in the NFC South. Two games behind the New Orleans Saints. Saints need a win to keep their Playoff hopes intact. Luke McCown drops it off to Graham. He's hit by Scott Fujita. Big hit by Scott Fujita. 
If you watch Fujita play, he, he is so versatile in where he is on the field. And Joe Vitt, who's his linebacker coach, has helped him out so much. He said when he first got in the league, he was really just a Sam linebacker in Kansas City, locked into his position, out on his half of the field. Joe Vitt has shown him the big picture. Sam of the defense, what all 10 guys around him are doing, he said that has been a big asset in terms of his ability to find the ball and be more productive in terms of showing up at the football. Three wide receivers, big third down play. McCown puts it up for Galloway, and he dropped the ball. Covered by Jason Kraft on the play. Galloway had it for a moment, but it dropped out of his hands. There's Joe Vitt, you were talking about, the linebacker coach. They got to like that matchup. Underthrown football. And Galloway goes up and he has it as he's coming down and it just looked like Jason Kraft somehow got it out. Yeah, he just pulled it out with his left hand, got his left hand in between the arms of Galloway and was able to dislodge the football. And the Bucks will go for it on fourth down. They are one for four this season on fourth down conversion attempts. McCown calls timeout. The Bucks have used two timeouts. John Gruden needs to come up with something here. The Sunday tailgate special. Subway, eat fresh. Need a lift? Yeah. Hop in. Chevy Silverado offers 315 horsepower and the best V8 fuel economy of any full-size pickup. Better than Toyota. Better than Ford. You too? Get in. Chevy Silverado. This is our truck. No timeouts remaining. They've had only 16 yards total offense here in the second half. They start from the nine-yard line. Three wide receivers. Breeze completes it to the tight end, Eric Johnson, to the 16. Let's check out the Giants and the Bears in Chicago. Kurt Menefee. Well, guys, remember those four interceptions Eli Manning threw last week? It's a new week and a shot at redemption against the Bears. Gets away, but then throws one away. Charles Tillman with the interception. Eli, two interceptions and a fumble in this game. And the Giants with a 16-7 hole in the fourth quarter. Sam and Tim. And you see, thank you, Kurt. You see Tom Coughlin on what's going on here? Is it self destruction, deja vu wow. all over again, second half of the season for the Giants? Could be. Pressure on Breeze. He gets rid of it to Reggie Bush. And he is brought down immediately at the 17 yard line. It'll bring up a third and two for the Saints. You've got to harass Drew Breeze, and it's Kevin Carter coming around the corner there on Stinchcomb. Getting the hands off now, dipping the shoulder, forcing Breeze to step up and get rid of it. That's what the Bucks want now. They will for with pressure. They hope to get with that front four. They will force the quarterback to throw into the no cover zone, which is everything underneath the coverage. Rally up and make tackles. Big third down play. Brian Kelly in as a fifth defensive back for the Bucks. Breeze throws, completes it to Lance Moore. A first down. Lance Moore, second year man out of Toledo, has really stepped up. And become a big part of the offense for the Saints. He's got some speed. And this is what they like to do. Watch, you got the defenders here, and they're going to be playing some man zone principles, but watch them flood it with a couple of receivers. Boom. And Ronde in some man right there. He had the out route, he had the flat, so he buzzed out there with Lance Moore. Just a really good throw from Breeze. Play fake by Breeze. Looking to go long. Goes to Lance Moore at the 35. He's taken down by Philip Buchanan. The Bucks have done a good job of keeping Marcus Colston quiet, but here's Moore getting open for a 14-yard pickup and a good job by the Saints coming out from their nine-yard line out to the 36. And Drew Brees, and they put up 14 points. You look at his QB rating, well up over 130 for the football game. If he gets to his back step and there's not pressure in his face, he knows all the hot spots of his own defense, where the windows are going to be, and where to find his guys open. Breeze, 13 for 17, 142 yards and two touchdowns. Bush takes it outside. And the Bucks are there to take him down. Short pickup. Give him three yards up to the 39 yard line. Barrett Rude makes the tackle. Another example of Reggie Bush seeing too much. I want you to watch the crease right there. If he just thinks four, I promise you he'll get more. 
Look at that. Think 40 yards. Get to the 40. Instead, he sees all the white jerseys. Ends up running into his own guy. And sometimes with young players, there's this saying that goes, you, you see a little, you see a lot, you see a lot, you see too much. He's seeing a lot right now, which means he's seeing too much and making a cut every time he sees the opposite color jersey. Two tight ends in. Breeze looking. Throwing, and it's dropped. He threw it behind one of those tight ends, Eric Johnson. Johnson came up uh, slowly, but he seems to be okay. And Greg White got a big hit on Drew Brees. You're going to see him flash from the top of the screen. It's a TE stun again, so he's coming underneath. That tackle and stun. Tackle gets upfield. That time he was second guy around, and he came in and cleaned it up and got a very nice hit on Drew Brees. It's not a sack, but it's a knockdown, and coaches like that well, as well. We don't get a lot of sacks on Brees, and I, I, you know, he's they've only given up eight on the year coming into the game. Gave up one today. Hurries and pressures are almost just as important. To get him off his spot and out of his rhythm. Third and seven. Breeze checking off. Time running down on the plate clock to get it off. Breeze in trouble. Got away from one, not the other. Rondé Barber. He got away from Gaines Adams, but Rondé Barber got him on the late blitz. And it's the second sack of the game for the Bucs, and only the tenth given up by the Saints, but a big one because the Saints will have to give it away. Here he is. Watch the get off. We told you Gaines Adams is getting better. He beats Stinchcomb off the ball. Stinchcomb doesn't have a chance, forces Breeze to step up, and then Rondé Barber coming from his nickel position comes in and finishes it up with a sack, which haven't been a lot of those for Rondé Barber over the last couple of years. Nice to see him find another one. High kick. Galloway taking it on the run. And he is taken down at the 36-yard line. Bucks defense comes up with a big stop. And now the Bucks offense goes to work. Sam Luke McCown's numbers have been terrific, but it's been the little things, I think, that have allowed him to be so successful with all the play fakes. Look at this. I mean, forcing linebackers to bite just poise. This is the one on the touchdown, the two hand. I mean, I almost fell for that one coming in to make the tackle. He's been been really good with all the little things, which has now magnified the big things, which has been terrific. I think he's at a career high in terms of pass yards in this football game. 24 for 31, 278 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Graham and Askew in the backfield from the 36. Graham fights his way up across the 39 just short of the 40 yard line. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have put up 416 yards of offense for the Saints defense. It's the fifth time this season they've given up over 400 yards. Yeah and it was Joey Galloway in the first half that really cranked them and then and then Ernest Graham got a couple of big runs on him. But the pick six has been the difference and that's why they're up in this football game. Mike McKenzie takes right. an interception back for a touchdown. Saints have done a good job in this second half on Galloway. McCown straight back with time and it's dropped by Alex Smith. Flag on the play. McCown was hit hard. Might be a late hit on Kendrick Clancy. Either that or a hold on one of the offensive linemen. Holding. You got me. Offense number 76. I should never doubt you. Ten yard penalty. It's these binoculars you got me. Down. <laughs> John Wade, the center, gets called for the hold. There he is, right? It's the center position, as you said, and it's going to be on Kendrick Clancy. There it is, right there. Clancy was pressing his outside edge, and John Wade just took him down before he could get to Luke McCown. Balls back to the 29 on second down. They have to get to the 46 for a first down. Michael Bennett in the backfield now. And Bennett with a good run up across the 40 to the 41 yard line. Picked up 12 on the play. His first carry of the game. Nice run. Roman Harper made the stop on Michael Bennett who has just been asking for a chance. He, oh, he's got skill now. Which people don't realize about Michael Bennett is he went to a Pro Bowl in 2002 yeah. with the Minnesota Vikings and has had some injuries and was actually here with the New Orleans Saints I think for a, for a cup of coffee before he ended over in Kansas City and then Tampa made a trade with Kansas City to get him in Tampa Bay. Big third and five play McCown short drop throws almost intercepted and it was caught. It was caught by the Bucks off of McKenzie but they're short of the first down. Yeah, he is short. What a play by Mike McKenzie to undercut that route. Michael Clayton, I believe, came up with that catch. 
we see in the bottom left of your screen 34 cut right under and undercut Michael Clayton and almost and get the dead. interception and then Jeremy Stevens comes down with the deflection with oh. the catch but short of the first down it was intended for Clayton Jeremy Stevens caught it but they come up a yard short and Josh Bidwell will punt again. Oh this is a high deep kick. Moore lets it bounce at the oh. five and the Bucks should cover it. It took a bounce their favor. They didn't want it bouncing into the end zone. It bounced back and the Saints will have to start at their 13 yard line. It's a one point game. These teams always play close games. Josh Bidwell with the punt. Two great punts in the second half of this game, locking him down inside the 20. From the 13, Reggie Bush takes it out. It's up to the 17 yard line. I shouldn't say these teams always play close games, but 12 of their last 17 games have been decided by seven points or fewer. Reggie Bush hurting as he heads for the sideline, walks off with pain on his face. Replaced by Aaron Stecker. Is that Derek Brooks coming over and delivering I the think, shot on him? I think Buchanan got him in the back of the neck with the second hit. Stecker. Stecker on the carry across the 20 to the 21 yard line. It'll bring up a third and two for New Orleans. Bush trying to walk it off. Along the sideline. Greg White and Ryan Sims come in on the defensive line for the Bucks. You know when you watch Reggie play he's got a lot. He, he, he's got a lot of the the qualities that the great Barry Sanders had early in his career without the 60 70 80 yard pops. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Barry would do the same thing but he'd bust a couple on you every game. Third and short. Stecker bounce off one man. Great effort. Second effort gets him a first down. Bucks almost had him for a loss. Stecker got away and gets a big first down at the 25 yard line. Terrific penetration by these defensive linemen that have a shot on him. And then Barrett Root's going to come and have an opportunity to clean him up. And Barrett Root is a very good tackler and unable to get Aaron Stecker down there before he gets past, as you see there, the yellow stripe for the first down. Stecker and Carney in the backfield. Reeves. Short pass to Eric Johnson. Jermaine Phillips pulls him down just across the 30 yard line. Drew Brees with two touchdown passes in today's game has thrown touchdown passes in eight straight games. Saints have no timeouts remaining. They've used them up, used them in the third quarter. They have a one point lead. What the Saints want to do here is get first downs, grind it out, get into your four minute drill, be able to run the football, pick up first downs, and not let Luke McCown and that offense get back on the field with a lot of time left. Number 64, Zach Streif is in as a tight end, eligible on the right side. Play fake by Breeze. Gets time. Throws short to Stecker. He wanted to go deep, nobody open. Stecker chased out of bounds at the 42, but another Saints first down. Boy, nice job by Jari Evans kicking out in pass protection to really eliminate what Gaines Adams was doing coming off the corner. Because Gaines Adams was coming scot free to get a big hit on Drew Brees. Jari Evans kicked out and got enough on him to where Brees bought time and was able to hook up with the receiver for the first down. Brees 15 for 20, 159 yards. No turnovers for the Saints. Of a yard on the play. We talked about timeouts. The Bucks have only one timeout remaining. And Reggie Bush along the sideline looks like he's a lot better. 
And he's done a good job running the football today. And we've seen a couple of times he's gone horizontal, he's gone sideways, but he's up near six yards a pop. Or I know over five yards yeah, a pop five. for the game, which is yeah, a little better good than stuff. five. Twelve carries, sixty-four yards. Patrick Chakora, number fifty-four, in at left defensive end for the Bucks. The play fake. Breeze has time. And he goes outside to Carney, the fullback at midfield. He's out of bounds. One thing when you when you start kicking it out to these guys and you're moving the chains you're picking up five six a pop keep guys stay in bounds. That's right. Go out of bounds and Saints stop the clock. To, no Saints want to keep that clock moving. We've seen twice on this drive where we've seen two guys go out of bounds and stop the clock which is going to give more opportunity obviously to the Tampa Bay Bucks. Monty Kiffin and his Bucks defense need a big stop here on a third and two. Well, we remember last week in that second half, his defense got tired and they were very vulnerable against the Washington Redskins in the second half of that game. Reggie Bush is back in with Carney in the backfield. Zach Streif is an eligible tight end on the right side. Flag stops the play. Bodies go down. False start against the Saints. That hurts. And false start. Offense number 64. The five yard penalty. Remains third down. So instead of Please third and two, it clock to 4:14. Becomes third and seven now. No, oh, it, it was Zach Streif and, and Stinchcomb actually moved right before him. So both guys on the right side there jumped before Breeze got to the snap count. Both teams have spread the ball around. Drew Breeze with 16 completions has hit nine different receivers. For the Bucks, 10 different receivers have caught passes in the game, including that one that went off the chest of Mike McKenzie and was caught by Jeremy Stevens. But right now, for the Saints, it is third and seven. They have to get to the Bucks' 48-yard line. I think Ron Winter, yes, he wants the clock adjusted. 4:14 on the clock now. See those numbers for Drew not great in terms of the total yards but very effective in his completions and no turnovers for him is the big key. Carney the fullback motions. Off the play fake. Graves for Reggie Bush. Juggles and drops it incomplete. And the Saints will be forced to punt. They are forcing Drew Brees up into the pocket. Gaines Adams, Greg White, both bringing enough off the edges to get Drew Brees uncomfortable. He's got to step up. Then there was a little gut pressure, so he had to get rid of the football to his check down. The Bucks were sitting there waiting for it. Mike Hilliard is deep. Steve Weatherford with his sixth punt of the game. Good high kick toward the sideline. Hilliard. And it bounce on him, kind of misjudge it. Great roll for the Saints, and it is down at the two-yard line. How about that one? A beauty by Steve Weatherford. I think Ike Hilliard misjudged the ball. 53-yard punt. So now the Bucks, trailing by one point with one timeout. Have the ball to two. Following this game, we've got the OT with complete scores and highlights of the NFL action today with the guys in the studio. And then it's the All-State BCS selection show. We'll find out who's going to the BCS Bowls and who will play in the All-State championship game right here in the Superdome in New Orleans. Exclusively on Fox. Now let's see how the young quarterback Luke McCown does in the pressure cooker. From the two. He's going to put it up. Completes it to White Kinyard and he's out of bounds at the seven yard line. He picked up five. Mike McKenzie knocked him out. Fourth catch of the game for Ike Kinyard. Luke McCown. 26 for 33, 287 yards. Joey Galloway has been kept quiet in the second half. Only one catch. Look at what he did in the first half. Halftime adjustments, mission accomplished to roll coverage to Joey Galloway. Crowd gets loud. And remember, the big one in the first half was a busted coverage. On second and five, McCown in trouble. Running, 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 and the 
can't see. Was he still in the end zone? It's close. What's the signal? Was it a safety? Ron Winter talking it over. Sure looked like a safety from up here. Where is the football when he goes down? That's the key. Mark Simino wants a safety. The officials discussing it. Ryan Young signals safety. Listen, if you're McCown, throw the football away. We saw that in the first half. You get out of the pocket, you can throw it away without intentional grounding. The ruling on the field is a safety. Wow. Will Smith chased McCown, and there was an indication of McCown maybe a little flustered, unsure of himself in this spot. Right here, you got to get rid of it. It goes past the line of scrimmage. You have no fear of an intentional grounding. And look at the ball is definitely inside the goal line when he goes down inside the end zone. Almost a horse collar with the way he that, grabbed him that, on the back of the jersey right there. That replay shows it all. That is a safety. Huge. Boy, how about the Saints defense? Despite the fact that they've given up 429 yards, they've come up with a big interception for a touchdown and now a safety and a three point lead for the Saints, and they'll get the ball. That's the biggest play of the year for Will Smith, too. No question about it. And the Bucks have only one timeout remaining. How about his athleticism for Will Smith? I mean, Luke McCown's back there running away from guys, linebackers, and Will Smith able to get his hands on him and show the grip strength to rip him back into the end zone, stop that forward momentum, and force the safety. Holy smokes, what a play. John Payton checking the clock. Josh Bidwell on the free kick. Will boot it away from the 20 yard line. Reggie Bush. You remember we showed you earlier what he did against the Bucks last year on a punt return. Now Bush signaling and switching with Lance Moore. Bush goes up to the 42 yard line. Moore is back at the 20. High short kick. It bounces. And the Saints have it. Basically almost had the effect of an onside kick and that's what it was pooch it up there give your guys a chance to go down there and get underneath it. I don't think that was a bad punt on accident by by Bidwell Lance Moore able to come up with a ball good hands by him Reggie Bush is still limping on the sideline Bush wants to stay in but Aaron Stecker comes in to replace him Bush limps off. Saints have the ball at their own 49 yard line. The Bucks have only one timeout left in the game. This has been some game. Five lead changes. The Saints with a three point lead here. And motion Eric Johnson. Stecker behind Carney. And the Bucks knock him down. Jermaine Phillips and Kevin Carter combine on the stop. The second and ten. Obviously, they've used a timeout, right? I mean, that hasn't moved. Clock has stopped, and they have used their final timeout. So the Bucks. Are out of timeouts. The Saints are out of timeouts. The clock will stop only one time further at the two minute warning. A big game as far as playoffs are concerned as we start the last month of the regular season. First place teams are Dallas, Green Bay, Seattle, and Tampa Bay. The Giants are in the first wild card spot, but they are trailing to Chicago. They are losing in Chicago 16 to 7. Minnesota won today over Detroit. Those two teams 6 and 6. Philadelphia and Washington both lost. They're 5 and 7. And here's the opening. They are on a downward spiral. They are on a downward spiral. We saw Philadelphia lose today. We saw the Washington Redskins lose today. I mean, if the Saints can win this game, they are right in the mix 
for this December run to the playoffs. And Arizona's leading Cleveland 27 21 under two minutes, and Arizona's five and six. Reggie Bush. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Loose ball. Did the Bucks recover? Bucks recover the first turnover of the game. What kind of play I don't was get that? It. I don't get that play call. You show the defense the ball. Javon Hay recovered the fumble. You got Reggie Bush trying to not hand it off but toss it back oh, on an end around. I don't understand that play at all. Holy cow. Watch this. Said if you can't get it don't throw wow. it. I mean that's just bad timing all the way around. There was no mesh point there. He actually tried to flip it across his body with his right hand. If you want it handed to him maybe there's every hand. No he wasn't even close enough to hand You know it what though forget all that bad yeah. execution but bad play call. Yeah, I agree. I'd have much rather prefer to dive right up the gut. And now if the Bucks pick up any kind of yardage they'll be in field goal territory for a chance to tie the game. Graham behind Askew. Down to the 33 yard line. He picked up four on the play. The Saints had control. Good field position. Bucks out of timeout. Three point lead. And you know they how, gave the ball back. You to know him. how you always hear quarterbacks after a bad player, they throw a bad pick and they, well, I wish I'd have had that one back. I think Sean Payton wishes he would have had that one back to make a different play call. Matt Bryant has missed from 52 today, but remember last year against Philly, he went 62 yards. For three points for the game winner. Graham and Askew in the backfield. The toss to Graham. Good blocking up front. Graham pushing the pile to the 29 yard line. It'll bring up a third and two for the Bucks. Ernest Graham closing in on 100 yards for the game. He's over 100 yards. His third 100 yard game this season. You don't arm tackle that guy. Rarely. I haven't seen one time all day where the first guy just literally takes him down without help. He's got a good stiff arm. Bad news for the Saints defensively. Mike McKenzie is gone to the locker room injured. He had an interception for a touchdown that gave the Saints the lead. Here's third and two. Graham behind Askew. There's a wall there and he didn't make it. Good work up front by the Saints. We've reached the two minute warning. The Saints have a three point lead. Matt Bryant will be coming on to try and tie it. This is bad news for the Bucs. They're starting center John Wade limping to the locker room with a trainer. Now the one good thing is he's not their long snapper. Right. So Economos will come out. He's the long snapper. Well maybe not. John Gruden is sending his offense back on the field. He had Matt Bryant yeah, he on. Did. He had his kicking unit out there. They are going for it. The Bucks down by three. What about this call Tim. Not a lot of confidence in your kicker. I don't think a lot of confidence I guess in your defense leaving that time on the clock for Drew Brees. It would have been a 46 yard field goal try instead it's fourth and one. With a new center. Graham behind Askew and he's got it a first down. Down to the 26 yard line was that huge for the Bucks. A gamble pays off for John Gruden. What did we say in the open. What did we say in the open that John Gruden was going to lean on his offensive line his blocking fullback to get things done. This is the biggest play in the game for them. Askew gets enough of a kick out the O line gets enough of a kick down in terms of the block down and then Graham does the dirty work. Matt Lair is the center. No timeouts for either team. McCown throwing short to Graham. Room to run inside the 10. Clock continues to run. He is down at the five yard line. It's a first and goal for the Bucks. And the, the Saints are not at full strength. Mike McKenzie is not out there for them defensively. Jason Kraft has replaced him. 22 yard pickup. McKenzie's, I think McKenzie's not even on the field. He's in the locker room. He's not even on the sideline. Graham six catches 36 yards McCown has passed for 308 yards first and goal at the Saints five Hilliard motions McCown looking 
throws it out to Graham. Down to the four yard line. 28 seconds remaining. Kevin Tisma on with a tackle. No timeouts. Spike it and then run a play. They spike go. it. So now it will be third and goal at the four yard line. So now you take a shot in the end zone. And then you bring in your kicker. If it's not a touchdown, it's incomplete. The clock stops. You got your kicker, Matt Bryant, to punch it through. And I got to tell you, if there's somehow the Bucks get the touchdown here and get the W, yeah. it's an early Christmas present from Sean Payton and that offensive play call on the, the reverse. I agree with you. Two tight ends in Alex Smith and Anthony Beck. Matt Lair has replaced John Wade at center. Ernest Graham in the backfield. With Askew. Smith motions. So does Jeremy Stevens. Three tight ends in for Stevens. Oh, what a catch! What a catch by Jeremy Stevens for a touchdown against Jason Kraft, the man who was in for Mike McKenzie. And the Bucks have the lead on the touchdown pass from McCown, his second touchdown pass of the game. You know Jeremy Stevens is a matchup problem. John Gruden's been saying it all year. He doesn't get a lot of reps. No McKenzie in the game. They've got the third corner, Jason Kraft, out there on him. Size and contrast isn't even close. A heater from McCown. And then how about the way Jeremy Stevens just plucked that football out of the air? Great grab. Extra point for Matt Bryant to make it a four point game. He does. So the mm. New Orleans Saints are down by four. This is the sixth lead change of the game. What a heartbreaker. Here's Steve. You're going to see Stevens. He's split out to the right. Here's the throw, and then look at the pluck. I mean, there's the size differential. Jason Kraft gets up, it's right over his outstretched hand. Jeremy Stevens didn't even have to get up in the air. You're going to see it all over here as he goes out in motion. There it is. And then watch Kraft. He's in perfect position. He's just not big enough. No. Does McKenzie make that play if he's in there? Hard to say. Hard to say. Do they throw that, the pass? Probably, if there, there's in there. the point. Probably don't throw the pass with Mike McKenzie out there on. Especially because he's been a takeaway threat. You don't want to give an opportunity to get a takeaway, and then you don't have a chance at a field goal. Wow. 14 seconds remaining. The Saints have no timeouts. Six lead changes in this game, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers could virtually assure themselves the division title right here. They would have a three game lead. Have you seen the rest of their schedule, too? I mean, the way their rest of their schedule sizes up is only advantageous for that football team. Tampa will go to Houston, then Atlanta at San Francisco. They'll finish with Carolina. They'd have a three game lead with four games to play, and they win the season series from New Orleans. Unless the Saints come up with a miracle. Bryant They've got no timeouts. They'll need a miracle. Lance Moore from the three. They fake the end around. Moore still has it. Moore is brought down at the 30 yard line. The ball came loose. I believe they rule him down. No, they, they rule it a fumble. Recovered by the Bucks. What did Drew Brees say? If we have two turnovers, we lose. It's going to hold true today with that turnover there right at the end. Does it make a difference? I don't know, but the numbers now hold up in terms of what Drew Brees says about the turnover margin and their chance to win a game. Byron Storer, the backup fullback, recovered the fumble at the 30 yard line. Six seconds remaining, and the Saints are in shock along the sideline. Without Jeff Garcia, that play will be reviewed. It's a booth review from upstairs. How about Luke McCown in this game today? No Jeff Garcia. Nobody knew what Luke McCown was going to do, including the head coach John Gruden. Said, frankly, I just don't know what he's going to do. Yeah, he looks good in, in practice, but you really don't judge a guy until you see him in Sundays when it's for real. Look at those numbers. You know what? He made two big mistakes in this game. He threw the interception, and then he, he would drop for a safety. This is what they will look at upstairs. But McCown bounced back from those from those mistakes.
Was he down? The ball comes out there. I think he might have been down. What Called do a think? fumble on the field. We had to see some more angles. Hard to tell from right there. Yeah, that's going to be down. It's down by uh, contact, I believe. But there's six seconds. It would give New Orleans chance for one desperation play. But getting back to Luke McCallum, I think the way he bounced back from throwing an interception, being dropped for the safety, and found a way to bring his team in for the winning touchdown. Showed a lot of moxie, thick skin today. I mean, he not to have Joey Galloway on fire in the second half and was still coming up with some big time plays. We'll await the decision of Ron Winter. He's looking at it for John Gruden. Boy, this was this was one tough game for both teams. And nothing new for Gruden coming to play the Saints with a different quarterback. That's another yeah. thing he told us. He said, you know, over the last several games, we've come in, we had to play these guys with six, six different QBs over the last few years. Josh Bidwell came up with a couple of big punts. Ron Winter's got the decision on the review. After review, with the ball in his possession, the runner's hip touched the ground. Therefore, he is down by contact. His first down. New Orleans on the 29 yard line. Please reset the game clock to eight seconds. Eight seconds. So what do we see here? Some hook and ladder too deep for a Hail Mary, right? Uh, definitely too deep for a Hail Mary. Well, I believe Sean Payton, who is an outstanding young coach, will be second guessed for quite some There's time. There's no doubt. And you know what? There's no doubt that he's a very, very good football yeah. coach, too. You ask guys to compete against him and Monty Kiffin and some of the D coordinators around the league. Sean is a very bright head coach. Would like to have, I, I believe, though, Sam, that play call back. Get the ball into Reggie Bush's hands, I believe. Breeze to Bush with some room. He steps out of bounds at the 42. And I don't think the clock ever began running, Tim. <laughs> Trying to find the official time. We have six seconds on our clock. Balls at the four. Gruden is not line. happy either. John Gruden is. There's no clock up on the on the scoreboard. Breeze sends everybody out being rushed. He's in trouble and they've got him. And that's the ball game. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers with Jovan Hay getting a sack have defeated the New Orleans Saints. The friends and coaching rivals shake hands. John Gruden and the Tampa Bay Bucks will go home happy. They have now won four in a row.